Hey guys, my name is David Saduski. I'm a 20 year old real estate agent. And at 18 years old, I was able to make a six figure income my first year in the business as a realtor. Today, we're going to talk about how to get over the fear of making outbound cold calls. This is the way I've been able to generate a six figure income. What I want you to do is comment below your specific fear as to why you can't make the cold call. And I will help you out directly in the comments. Uh, to get you to make the income that you want to make as a real estate agent. Let's get into the video. So the first step in becoming a master prospector is to simply start freaking dialing. Plain and simple, you just have to pick up the phone and start dialing, as Jordan Belford says in Wolf of Wall Street. You know, I know that sounds cliche, but it really is that simple. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Everybody's caught in this analysis paralysis phase where they're analyzing every detail of the call trying to make the perfect call on their first call. You know, looking at how to overcome every objection, how to say the perfect line, when to say the perfect line. It, it's not a one-liner that you're gonna hit with these clients consistently. You are having a conversation. It's supposed to be natural and organic. And with that, it's not gonna be a robot speaking perfectly, saying the perfect line. So, you know, allow that, embrace that. Be natural on the phone, be yourself. When I was, to give you a little insight, when I was, you know, a teenager in high school, I was quite literally the most socially awkward kid you could possibly imagine. You can ask any one of my buddies and they'll tell you I'm extremely socially awkward and, and weird, okay? So it's not a natural born skill. You can work on it and read some books. A book I commonly recommend, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie and Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. These two books will help you get better at communicating but before you even read those, just get comfortable making the calls. You know, do you can do both simultaneously. What you'll do, you'll you'll make the calls, you'll figure out exactly what you have to hone in on and work on that specifically. So again, I can't emphasize this enough. Just pick up the phone, start dialing. We'll talk about some strategies later on in this video as to you know how to make it not so awkward or get over that fear, but you simply just have to start calling. Now let's talk about the value of preparation. This is something that helped me out when I initially at 18 years old was getting into making phone calls when I didn't feel prepared or have some sort of game plan in mind when I was going to make the calls, I, I would fumble them every single time. But when I had a, a game plan going into it, I, I, I did fairly well. So the value of preparation is huge because now you have some sort of game plan. Think about when you were in high school and, and you bombed your, your presentation in class it's typically because you weren't prepared, you weren't practiced, you, you had no idea what you're going to say going into it. It's the same thing when making cold calls. You want to have some sort of game plan. Now, you don't want to get stuck in the analysis paralysis phase. And this is where scripts do help. Again, you don't want to read a script line for line, like this is what I'm supposed to say, then this is what I'm supposed to say, then this. That's not what a script's used for. It's to just give you a frame of reference of how the conversation is supposed to go in the order. Uh, that it's supposed to go in. So this is where the value of preparation comes in. And it's less important than just making the calls. But if you want to start feeling more comfortable and confident on the phone, you want to be prepared going into it. Meaning, I, I have uh, scripts on, on my website, link in the description below. And what I do, I'll highlight the key questions that you must ask in every conversation. No matter what the conversation is, unless it's a wrong number, I can get through all three of those questions every single time. Now, everything else in between, this is where it's just going to ebb and flow. This is where the conversation, the art of conversation comes in, and you have to be able to just communicate naturally through that. But there's key questions in mind when I'm going into every single call as to what I want, what the goal is, trying to figure out what their motivation and goal is and how I can provide value there. It's plain and simple what it is. Every time I make a call, you know, say it's a for sale by owner, their goal is to get their home sold. That, that's what they want for the most amount of money possible. So when I communicate to them, I have a preparation before I go into the call as to, can I net them the more, can I net them more money? Can I sell it quicker? What am I gonna say to show them my value here? You know, I have a goal, they have a goal. How can we meet th those two goals? That is the preparation level. And this is where scripts do come in handy because again, you have a order of how the conversation should go to meet your goal and theirs. Um, that, that's really all the preparation I do. I don't do a bunch of backend research before I make the call because it just makes, it takes too much time. 
unless it's like a multi-million dollar property, then I'll do obviously quite a bit more work before I make the call. But average sale prices, I'm, I'm just calling them before I even know anything. I call them and then as I'm on the phone with them, I'm figuring out information, having the conversation with them, taking the notes, and I have my script in front of me so I know how the conversation should go. Uh, so the value of preparation is huge and it will make you more comfortable and confident so you're not just stuttering through trying to figure out what to say. You have some sort of idea going into it as to what the mission is. So value preparation is huge. Recommend, again, link in the description below for my uh, any scripts that I have. FISBO, Expired, for rent by Owner, uh, and you can take a look at that. And just do a quick glance over them, change it to your own style, and have a game plan going into making your next call. So now let's talk about how to handle any objection that gets thrown your way. This is again to give you more of a sense of preparation going into the calls and to give you something very valuable while making the calls. When I was first starting out in the business, I was stuck in that analysis paralysis phase trying to find every answer to every objection. There's literally hundreds of them, hundreds of objections that you can get and there's a different line for all of them. It's just unrealistic to memorize that and just get it in the in the moment of the call. So I created a way to handle pretty much any objection that gets thrown your way with just one simple line. Uh, that line being, makes sense, let me ask you this. I know it sounds stupid, but the idea is you agree with whatever the objection is. You give them recognition and you agree with them and then you just move right on through the script. And I've seen it work it works for me constantly. Uh, so for example, a for sale by owner, you know, they say, Hey, I, I hate realtors. I don't want to talk to realtors. Hey, totally makes sense. I would do the same thing as I, if I was in your shoes. Let me ask you this. If I was able to net you more, if I was able to sell it quicker, if I was able to, whatever it is, you just move right on to the, the to the next question. Um, you know, another example is, Hey, I, you know, I don't think you can actually net me more. Hey, makes sense. I, I totally understand why you would think that. Let me ask you this. If I was able to show you seven comps that supported my price, would you be open to meeting me? You know, it's just agreeing with them. Not to, you don't want to debate with the for sale by owner or the expired or the front by owner. We're not trying to have a debate. We're just trying to have a conversation. Uh, and the biggest way to handle any objection I found is to quite literally agree with whatever they said. I know that sounds insane, but makes sense. Let me ask you this and move on. Um, it's worked for me flawlessly and it gets you through the script and it just gets you thinking less stuff in your head. I noticed a lot of time when I was first starting making the calls, I had a lot going on in my head, which just slowed me down when I was making the calls. And it would make me stutter, it would make me freeze, I didn't know what to say, because I had all this information from the analysis paralysis phase that I had going on in my head, and I wasn't just having an organic conversation. The key is to have a few key principles, like handling any objection, makes sense, let me ask you this, like being prepared, having a goal by the end of the, like for the end of the call, uh, and just simply making the calls. And that will get you through the calls and, and have a very high quality chance of getting the listing appointment at the end. So again, any objection makes sense. Let me ask you this. If you don't believe me, ask me an objection in the comments below and I'll, I'll, I'll use the line makes sense. Let me ask you this and move it on from there. So plain and simple, making the calls is the number one way to build your business the fastest, in my opinion. It's worked for me. I've seen it work for countless agents. Uh, I'm talking to a guy right now, coaching him, and he's doing $2 million this month in January 2024. Uh, that's incredible, and it's all from prospecting. So do not be scared making these calls. It's your biggest opportunity to get business. You know, a lot of people try to market themselves. Marketing is great. I personally, I don't go as in depth with it as I should be. I'm not, I'm not lying. I should be doing it more, uh, but I don't need to. Prospecting is where I get the business. Marketing is great, but it's long term. Like you're planning out a year or two business ahead, and that's if you do it correctly. Prospecting is very simple. You just make the calls. There's free data right in front of you through Zillow for sale by owners, uh, and you can just call roughly a hundred people. And I, I promise you, if you call, let's say 100 people, you make contact with 100 people, you're going to get a listing appointment. I know the national average right now is about 50 contacts per one listing appointment. So think about that. If you made 50 contacts, you would have a listing appointment in your bag. That's incredible. 
you can roughly make uh, the national average again is six contacts per every hour. So every week you can be getting a listing appointment. That's more business than I've found anything to give me. Uh, so prospects is the way to go. So these four tips have really helped me get over my fear of prospecting when I was 18 years old. Again, coming from that socially awkward, weird kid in high school, these, these tips have really helped me hone my skills. But the reason I put in the beginning of the video, simply make the calls and just start dialing. I've made over 100,000 calls. You know, I, over time, I've gotten better. I've honed my skills and I'm continuously getting better. So don't get stuck in the analysis paralysis phase. You know, make the calls, work on what you know you need to work on, make them again, get that perfect and work on something else. And continually, you'll get better at making the calls. And most of it is just feeling calm, natural, and confident on the phone, which comes in just making the calls consistently. On average, I'm coaching an agent within my brokerage and he was very scared to make the calls at first. Two weeks later of making the calls five days a week, he is not scared at all. Doesn't care what the outcome is. Uh, my goal when I make phone calls is not, yes, it is to get the listing appointment, but I am equally as excited to just get a contact because I know on average, for me, it's every 30 contacts, I get a, a listing appointment. If I make one contact, whether they say yes or no, uh, I have 29 more to, to get a listing appointment on average. So that is how my mindset has shifted. I don't, I don't get sad when they say no, I'm just showcasing my value. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I move on. I hope this video has helped you guys out. Again, leave any comments below where I can help you out with the specific fears that you have through prospecting. But these are the things I was scared of and how I overcame that over time. Thanks for watching.